So Hoka actually released its first shoe with a carbon plate a couple years before Nike introduced the Vaporfly. And it's had quite a bit of time to figure out what it's doing with carbon fiber plates. And we're on the third iteration of the Carbon X. But after all this time, has Hoka been able to finally make a shoe that's on par with today's super shoes? Or are they still stuck in the past? Well, after a couple of runs in the Carbon X3, I'm ready to give you my first impressions. Just a quick disclaimer that Hoka did send me the shoe for the purpose of review, but they're not paying me to say anything and they're completely my personal thoughts on the shoe. First up, let's talk about the specs. So the stack height is 32 millimeters in the heel and 27 in the forefoot. But I believe according to World Athletic Standards, which includes the sock liner, it's 39 in the heel and 34 in the forefoot. Either way, it has a five millimeter heel to toe drop. I believe that it weights around 8.5 ounces for a men's size 9, and I put the shoe in the carbon plated trainer slash racer category. Let's go ahead and dive into the what's new shoe overview. So the upper mesh is gone and replaced with a completely knitted material that uses various thickness and thinness to add security or stretchiness to the shoe. The midsole has the same meta rocker geometry, swallowtail heel, and bottom loaded carbon plate as the previous version. But instead of the CM EVA in the midsole, it is now super critical EVA. The outsole is also the same as last year, which acts as part of the midsole and is made up of just exposed rubberized EVA foam. All right, now let's talk about the fit of this new upper. So in pretty much every single Hoka shoe I've owned, I'm a size 12, but I got sent a size 11 and a half in the Carbon X2 and I thought it was going to be too small because I've never been 11 and a half in the Hoka, but it actually fits pretty well. I think that my left foot is maybe just a hair too short, but my right foot it actually fits really perfectly on. So you might actually want to go down half a size in this shoe. So although this new knitted upper is nice and sock-like, it does have a pretty messy fitting heel area. So when I just slid the shoe on and was walking around, I had major heel slippage going on. And before I went to the run, I had to really crank down the laces, which caused it to kind of pucker up in the upper, get some of these folds going on. And I had to really, really make sure that they were cranked tight just to help reduce that heel slipping. And there are no extra eyelets on this shoe. So typically I always use the extra eyelets, get a nice secure lockdown around the ankle, or sometimes do a runner's knot but you cannot do that with a shoe due to that knitted upper. So I tried the best I could, but I still got some heel slip on my run, and that's even going down half a size from my normal size. So I think if I were to go my true to size, I would have got even worse heel slippage. I'd recommend you go ahead and try this shoe on at your local running store to get an idea of how the fit works with your foot. But to me, I think it's kind of a messy fit overall. All right, now let's talk about the ride of the shoe. So in the sense of the missile geometry and the stack and stuff like that, it's going to be the exact same as the Carbon X2. So that means you still get a really smooth heel to toe transition, a nice quick turnover thanks to that kind of aggressive toe rocker, a little extra pop off the toe. You start to notice the plate a little more when you're on your forefoot. So those things were really nice when I was picking up the pace and it, the shoe actually really started to come alive when I was going at those kind of 6.30 minute per mile paces and faster. However, when I was going slower, it didn't feel as energetic or lively. So when I heard that Hoka was using a new supercritical EVA foam in the midsole, I kind of got my hopes up because I was like, oh, you know, it'd probably be softer, a little more bouncy because in the Carbon X2, I thought it was really firm. But unfortunately, I think this is still a very firm shoe, or at least to my liking, I think it's very firm. As far as the energetic part, I think it might have just a little bit more bounce than the previous version, but it's still not a trampoline. It's not like one of the Zumex or Fuel Cell, one of those super shoes. It's just kind of your basic firm midsole EVA, I would say. So I'm hoping that it's just kind of a little bit firm at the beginning and as I put more miles on it will soften up but I guess we'll have to see. Alright now I'm going to do a few quick comparisons with the Carbon X3. 
So the first shoe I'm going to compare the Carbon X3 to is the Hoka Rocket X. So the Hoka Rocket X is the shoe that you see all of the Hoka Pro athletes wearing. This shoe I actually really liked. It had a really soft and lively midsole. It just didn't have that high stack that you see in a lot of other marathon racers or even the Carbon X3. However, other than that, I really liked the shoe. It didn't, wasn't quite as aggressive as some other carbon plated shoes. And I think I would still pick this shoe for half marathon and above. But if I wanted to race like a 5K or 10K, I think I might do the Carbon X3 just because it has that more aggressive pop and it's a little firmer. And when I'm running my 5K, 10K pace, I don't want something that's gonna be kind of soft and squishy. I want something that's nice and firm and responsive. So that's one case where I would pick the shoe over the Rocket X. So I kind of already compared the shoe to the Carbon X2. I wasn't the biggest fan of the Carbon X2 upper. I thought it was good, but it didn't wow me. I personally like the upper of the Rocket X better, but I think that the Carbon X2 upper is better than this kind of wonky fitting upper of the Carbon X3. I think the ride is somewhat similar. Like I don't think it's like this is a drastic change from the Carbon X2. And I think the price difference between the two really shocked me. The shoe is gonna retail for $200 while the Carbon X2 retailed for 180. I think it's on sale for like 140 now. And I think that's a more reasonable price to pay compared to the $200 for this shoe, which I don't think is necessarily worth it, or at least after just a first couple of runs in it, that's kind of my first thoughts on it. And the third shoe I'm gonna compare it to is the Artist from Atreyu. So the reason I wanted to compare these two shoes is because the midsoles both use supercritical EVA. And that's why I got excited when I heard that this was using supercritical EVA is because I liked the midsole in this shoe. It's pretty soft, pretty bouncy. It's no top tier super foam, but it's for EVA, I actually really like it. And this is not the same. This is much firmer, much denser. So I'm not sure if they just need to inject more air into it or what, but I really wish they used this kind of more plush midsole in this shoe. The upper, I'm not a huge fan of the upper on this shoe either. The heel rubs me as well. So I think that's kind of a draw there, but it does have actual rubber and the carbon plate in here is more aggressive. This one's bottom loaded, so it's pretty much just flat and sits on the bottom. So I think this does kind of have a nicer pop and spring thanks to the foam more aggressive plate than the carbon x3 does and this is half the price which is pretty crazy so this isn't my final verdict i still have to put more miles on this shoe see if it breaks in run it through the different run types see how it performs at each of those but just for my first impressions i'm kind of disappointed with this shoe i think it's because i just really got my hopes up with the new midsole foam and i like the knitted uppers typically on racing shoes like the Atom Knit on the Alpha Fly and the Vaporfly Fly Knit and it just fell short in both of those categories. So I do think that this is a pretty good tempo day shoe. Like I said when I was picking up the pace it felt really smooth, got some nice pop off the toe, but for a race day shoe it is not a contender for me. It might be a contender for you if you don't like those super soft and squishy foams and you want something that's a lot more stable because this is a very stable shoe for a carbon plated racer. However, for my half marathon marathon distances, I really love those trampoline like super soft foams like Zoom X, Flight Foam Turbo, Fuel Cell, those type of things. And this just is not that. So make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss my full review of this shoe to see if my thoughts change and so that you don't miss any of my other Hoka videos coming up about their spring and summer lineup. Thanks for watching and as always, keep on running.